and welcome to Insights with Elliott Wave. According to EWI's latest report, reversals in both the Eurostox 50 index and the DAX remain highly probable. Down the line to tell us more is Brian Whitmore. Brian, while bullish analysts endorse buying stocks everywhere in Europe, even the bears argued Germany should withstand the oncoming downtrend. Do you agree? Well, no, I don't. And the primary reason is because of the Elliott wave pattern in the DAX. If you look at the German market since 2011, prices have traced out a textbook five wave advance. That's a technical pattern we look for to confirm the end of a rally. Also, the rally fits nicely within a parallel trend channel. That's something we look for. Momentum has also waned over that time. Volume has been contracting. So market technicals, even in Germany, point to an ending advance, not the beginning of a new bull market. The ECB launched QE on March the 9th. The bank also revealed increased growth outlooks for the next few years. Yet EWI suggests the lender's actions signals full-blown panic. Can you tell us why, please, Brian? Yeah, I think those growth outlooks will prove to be way too optimistic because QE is nothing new. The ECB has been trying and failing to generate economic growth since 2007. They've cut interest rates below zero. They've engineered half a dozen bailouts. They've already provided long-term loans through Lytro and targeted Lytro. And yet deflation, which is what all of these programs have attempted to divert, is now intensifying in Europe. Many people say that that stocks can't fall with QE backstopping the market. I see it exactly opposite. I think QE is the central bank's last ditch attempt to turn Europe around. And I think when it begins to fail, a lot of stock investors will start to realize that, hey, there's nothing really supporting this market at all. And what does EWI tell us about the bank sovereign nexus? And how do you see this playing out? Yeah, I talked about that term in my last newsletter. It describes the interdependence between European banks and their sovereign governments. If you, if you look at Europe's major financial institutions, they carry almost two trillion in sovereign debt now. That's nearly double the levels from 2000. And I think this dependence is especially dangerous right now because optimism is rampant. Banks are holding bonds from weaker governments and they believe that their risk is minimal. They believe that the ECB will keep bailing out weaker borrowers. I don't think that's gonna happen. When Greece was first bailed out, taxpayers took the loss. During the second bailout, bondholders started taking the losses. Then ordinary bank depositors lost money when Cyprus was bailed out. So this is the trend. The actual debt holders and depositors are taking a larger and larger share of the losses. I think it's only a matter of time before we see a major sell-off in debt markets. Uh, that's going to put a tremendous amount of pressure on European banks. Brian, thank you. Well, that's all from Brian and myself for the moment, but we'll be back in April with the next instalment. See you then.